This is the new Porsche 911 GT2 RS, and it is the single craziest Porsche 911 ever made, ever. And today I'm gonna show you around it. I borrowed this GT2 RS from a viewer in the San Francisco Bay Area who runs a company called Savvy LLC that designs and engineers performance parts for the recent Porsche 911 GT3 models. They're currently focused on aero products with one set to launch early next year. You can check out Savvy LLC by clicking the link in the description below. I'm going to start with the basics. Now, the GT2 RS is objectively the craziest 911 ever, and here are some numbers that back up that claim. This car has seven hundred horsepower. It has 553 pound-feet of torque. The starting price is around $300,000. It's faster around the Nürburgring than the Porsche 918 Spyder. It'll do 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds and it'll hit a top speed of 210 miles per hour. Porsche fanatics will take issue with me calling the GT2 RS crazier than the 911 GT1, which was essentially a road version of the Le Mans race car from the 1990s. But here's the thing, the GT2 RS has 170 more horsepower than the old 911 GT1. It's also quicker to zero to 60 and it has a higher top speed. This thing is faster and more powerful than the road version of a Le Mans race car from 20 years ago. So today I'm going to show you around the GT2 RS and I'm going to show you all of the interesting quirks and cool features of the craziest Porsche 911 ever made. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the GT2 RS click the link below to visit autotrader.com oversteer where I've also compiled a list of the most interesting and unusual Porsche 911 models currently listed for sale on Autotrader. Now I'm going to start up front and specifically in the trunk, but before I get in there, I want to talk about the emblem. Now this car is an all-out track weapon designed for the best track times possible, and so they saved weight everywhere they could, and that includes the emblem. Porsche didn't bother with metal emblems on this car, instead they went with decals, as they do for all of the GT3 RS type cars that are trying to save as much weight as possible. That probably saves 0.4 ounces, but it is kind of a cool story to tell. My car is so lightweight that it doesn't even have badges. Anyway, you open up the trunk and you are greeted by a couple of interesting items under here. I like the fact that everything in this car seems to be GT2 RS branded, including the car cover, but not just the car cover, that includes the bag the car cover came in. Even that bag doesn't just say 911, it says GT2 RS. But things get much crazier than that. How about the fact that there's this little cap here where you can add a fluid, and even this cap says on it GT2 RS. They don't just use the same cap from the GT3 RS, this car has its own unique one. I also like the fact that this cap says on it, only distilled water. Why is that? Well, it's because your GT2 RS only drinks distilled water. Of course, it would never put up with that tap water swill that you drink. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's obviously where you add the coolant. Now, the other interesting thing under here is the fact that there is under here the 911 GT2 RS Halter Kenzaiken. <laughs> This is actually the front license plate mount. But again, even this is specific to the GT2 RS. It's not just the 911 front license plate mount or the GT3, GT3 RS, GT2 RS mount. It's the Halter Kenzeichen that only goes to the GT2 RS. Now, another item that's branded GT2 RS in the front of this car is this front lip spoiler down here, which is the kind of thing that I have nightmares about because it is so incredibly low. It's like three inches off the ground. This is the kind of thing you damage on a parking curb basically every time you park. But it does have a huge GT2 RS logo across the front of it, so you know exactly what car you're in. And so do the people who come to the parking lot after you leave when they find this sitting on the ground. It is worth noting though that this car has an axle lifting system. You push a little button in the center console and then the front axle will lift itself up so it can clear parking curbs and sort of steep driveways and other things that this car might have trouble clearing in its normal state with this like 
three inch ground clearance. Next up, our next interesting things are on the front fender of the car. I'm gonna start with the fuel door. It being up front isn't really all that unusual. All Porsche 911s have it up here. The unusual thing is when you open it up, you can see it is this beautiful silver fuel cap and it says Porsche across the center and has these rivets. It is gorgeous. It also has turn to click written on it, both in English and in German. English is on the bottom upside down. German takes precedence on the top and it says Drechen bis click. <laughs> anyway, the fuel cap is very cool. Not really in keeping with the lightweightness of the car, but it is a really neat look. Now, the other neat look on the outside of this car are these fender vents, which are absolutely massive. Fender vents have become a big trend in the car industry in the last 20 or so years, but no car does fender vents quite like the GT3 RS and the GT2 RS. They're these giant check marks. Now, the interesting thing about the fender vents is they're very functional. The whole idea is that it sends air sort of through the wheel arch and out up here, which provides a lot more front downforce. In other words, that's air like pushing down on the front of the car. This is really important in a car car like the GT2 RS with the engine in back because the front can start to feel very light, especially at the speeds this thing can go. So the more downforce you can get in front, the better. And that's why they have these massive air vents. Next up, we move on to the wing. Now the wing on this car is just massive. These wings on these Porsche GT3, GT3 RS, GT2 cars have just gotten bigger and bigger over the years. But this is the most hugely insane, massively ridiculous wing I have ever seen on a Porsche. It is so large, in fact, that they print Porsche on the top of the wing facing up so that pilots can identify the GT2 RS from the air along with other giant items like the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Now, the purpose of the wing is obvious. It provides incredible downforce at speed, and it is actually useful and functional and helpful, but it's also just totally crazy to see a wing like this on the back of a 911. Remember when 911s used to be subtle? Now, next up, we move under the hood or the bonnet or the engine cover or whatever you want to call it to see the engine. But before we do that, a couple things worth noting. One, this piece is incredibly heavy. Obviously, an engine cover is already kind of heavy. It's a piece of bodywork, but this has this massive wing on it, and so it's heavier than usual. When you put it up, something interesting happens. You put it up and then it clicks into place using this tiny little red clicky mechanism over on the right. Most cars have hydraulics that keep this up, but again, to save weight, they decided not to do that. Instead, this entire heavy piece, and really it is heavy, is held up by this tiny little plastic clicky thing, which doesn't seem like it's enough, but it's holding it in place just fine, at least for now. Now, once you get into the engine compartment, you'll see you don't actually see the engine. That's true of a lot of the newer 911s. It's kind of underneath stuff and you can't actually access it. Instead, all you get are a couple of spots where you can add fluids and then two big fans back here. The one on the left says GT2 and the one on the right says RS. Now, when you go to close the engine compartment in your GT2 RS, you can't just slam it down. And that's where I think a lot of GT2 RS owners might get into trouble because you're kind of used to just doing that. But in this car, the little plastic thing is in place preventing you from doing it. So if you slam it, you're going to break the plastic thing. Instead, you have to kind of unlock the plastic thing, move it down, and then you can close the engine cover. One other really interesting item on the outside of the GT2 RS before we move inside, you see this back glass back here? Yeah, this isn't glass. The rear window in this car is not glass. It's like plexiglass or something else in order to save weight. Same thing goes for the rear quarter windows. And when you tap them, you can hear that it doesn't sound like glass as opposed to the front windows, which actually are glass and have the more traditional glass sound. Now, one drawback of this is that it means there can be no heating element that goes through it. So if you're driving your GT2 RS on a frosty morning and there's ice over your back window, well, too bad, there's no heating coils so that you can defrost it. Now, next up, we move on to the interior where there are several interesting and unusual items in the GT2 RS. I wanna start with the fact that this car has the Weissach package. Weissach is Porsche's test track and development facility. And one thing that Porsche has started doing in recent years is offering a 
regular GT2 RS, or if you want to go completely all out, you can get the Weizsack package for better performance, more aerodynamics, whatever it happens to be for each car. In this vehicle, it has Weizsack RS written on the headrest, along with an image of the Weizsack test track itself. It also says Weizsack RS on the dashboard. That way, all your friends know that you have the Weizsack package, if they weren't already able to tell from the subtle little upgrades on the exterior of the car. Now, speaking of the dashboard, I just got to talk about the cup holders because this car has the best cup holder design in the entire history of the car business. Okay, you look at the dashboard, there's no cup holders, but if you push this little carbon fiber bit, then it drops down and then you can extend the cup holders out. So you're thinking, well, but then that little carbon fiber bit has to stay down. It looks ugly. No, no. Porsche has little cuts in the carbon fiber piece that comes down that allows the cup holders to stay extended and lets you put the carbon fiber piece back up to make it look nice again. This is absolutely brilliant. The cup holders basically come out of nowhere. They're hidden, they're invisible, and that allows a crazy performance car like this to have two usable cup holders, which isn't something you can say for anything else. Take that, Huracan Performante. But anyway, back to weight savings for a second. I wanna talk about the rear seats. A regular 911 has rear seats, although small ones. You could throw stuff back there or a little child or whatever. The GT2 RS has no rear seats. They took them out in order to save weight. Instead, you just kind of have little holes carpeted where the rear seats would have been plus a center console in Alcantara back there that says GT2 RS on it, like so many things do on this car. And speaking of seats, the front seats, they aren't exactly plush. This car has manual sport seats, not multi-way power function heated seats like a lot of Porsche models do. And they are incredibly tight and incredibly narrow, and they are designed to keep you precisely in place on the racetrack. Another interesting weight savings item in this car is that Porsche has removed the regular door handles. This car doesn't have standard door handles. Instead, it has these little fabric cloth loops that you pull in order to get out of the car. Personally, I've always felt that this was kind of a stupid little gimmick because right next to these cloth loops that probably saved two ounces, you have the power windows. If Porsche was really serious about weight savings, they would put in crank windows, but they know their customers won't stand for that. But they will stand for the little fabric door loops so that they can brag to everybody else about how far Porsche has gone to save weight in their GT2 RS. Now, next up, moving further into the interior, I want to talk about the steering wheel. As you can probably see, the steering wheel looks crazy. That's because this is a racing steering wheel. This is a modification that the owner of this car made. This car is otherwise almost completely stuck, except for the steering wheel, and it has an exhaust. Now, when you put in a racing steering wheel like this, you lose the airbag, but uh, the owner of this car, he's all about track use and that sort of thing, and he's like, airbag, I don't need any of that crap and so it doesn't have one. Now, near the steering wheel, you can see on the turn signal stock, you have the voice control icon. And I like the fact that the voice control icon has a picture of a human face speaking, and it's gender ambiguous. Could be a man, could be a woman, but it definitely has an ear. <laughs> For some reason, that's the part of the face they decided to put in detail, the ear. Other than that, it's just a face speaking with little speaking lines coming out from it. Next up, moving on to some tech features in this car. In the gauge cluster, you have on the right a full color screen which has a couple of interesting items. One, it shows a G-force meter, so you can see how many Gs you're pulling on your GT2 RS. That's pretty common in performance cars. What isn't common is the fact that it also shows your horsepower and torque graphs. Now, a lot of cars show instant horsepower, how much power you're making at this very moment, but this car actually shows the graph showing how much you could be making, and then it shows in real time how much you actually are making, and that's kind of cool. And it shows the exact same thing for torque, so you can watch your horsepower and torque graphs relative to where you could be, while you drive down the street. Next up, if you go down further, it has a little display where it shows all of the important performance metrics. Basically, anything a GT2 RS owner would want to know on the track. You have boost pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature, and altitude. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could want to know that, but not more than a lot of other things. That screen, it's worth noting though, is configurable. So you can change out altitude for a lot of different stuff, including current song track, current time, but also engine temperature. And probably that's the one you'd want to go with if you're actually racing this car on the track. Next, we move on to the infotainment system where there are a couple of interesting quirks. One is the fact that it allows you to adjust your desired amount of airflow from the climate control system. And it gives you the following options, soft, gentle air conditioning with reduced airflow, normal air conditioning with balanced airflow, or strong, forceful air conditioning with strong airflow. Every other car would say low, medium, high, or maybe soft, medium, strong, 
but Porsche uses these words and a description so you know exactly what you're getting when you select your desired airflow. Another interesting item, the infotainment settings. You can choose what is displayed on your footer on the little item that always stays in place on the bottom. Interestingly, this isn't as configurable as you might think. You could choose between temperature and clock, but you can't have both. So you have to decide. <laughs> Is it more important to know what temperature it is or what time it is? The GT2 RS owner's dilemma. Next up, you probably have seen already that everything in this car is customized to the GT2 RS. I showed you the car cover said GT2 RS, the coolant cap said GT2 RS, that front lip, the door cells, everything says GT2 RS, no exceptions. Well, actually, there is one exception. If you go into the infotainment screen in the fader settings to choose where you want to place the sound, you can see this vehicle shown in the infotainment screen clearly has back seats. It has four seat belts. What a tremendously unfortunate oversight. They couldn't put a picture of a GT2 RS in there. I feel like they have cheaped out in my GT2 RS and I want my money back. The last interesting infotainment system setting comes when you select options, you can choose to have the background image displayed or not. Although when you click background image, it's just this gray image with like random lines. I've gone through a lot of menus in this thing and I can't figure out where you change that. So you can either have no background image or a random background image with gray lines that Porsche has decided is the alternate. Those are your only choices. And so those are the quirks and features of the wild and crazy GT2 RS. Now it's time to get it out on the road and drive it. All right, driving the GT2 RS. First and most important and most obvious thing is just how quick PDK, Porsche's dual clutch transmission, really is. It's still like amazing to witness just how quickly the car jumps into, I mean, the tack just like, I've never seen it anything like it, especially with this level of smoothness. The car in general, I don't know if it's something that I would want to live with all the time. Uh, I will say relative to a Huracan Performante, which is sort of, I would say this car's closest current competitor, which I've driven, uh, it's more livable than that. Um, two cup holders, <laughs> but also it's just, it's a 911, just kind of less stuff you have to put up with. With that said, like the Huracan Performante, the ride in this car is unbelievably harsh. It's almost crazy to be driving this car with the ride this harsh because it's like I look at the 911 interior and I'm used to like sitting in a regular 991 where it's like you know a little bit harsh but mostly just kind of plush this ain't that all right I'm gonna give it some gas here whoa well that's that's feels like the 918 car just feels so competent. Oh, oh, that is acceleration like I have scarcely felt before. Oh my God, that's fast. Wow. The speed is just fantastic, but also the car's steering capabilities are incredible. The steering is so precise and so quick. It feels like very few cars that I have driven before. It is really, really amazing in that respect. Wow. Wow, this thing is just a weapon. It is a total attack weapon on curvy roads like this. This is phenomenally phenomenal. <laughs> Truly incredible. The acceleration is just brutal, but the steering is also so good. This car is finesse and power in a way that very few cars are. This thing is magic. Wow. Well, that was amazing. Uh, takeaway message here is, this is one of the great performance cars on sale today. You know, I saw the numbers faster than 918 around Nürburgring. I was like, eh, it's just another Porsche. They're doing more models. Fine, but if you're gonna get one, get the ultimate one. And this is the ultimate one and Oh, does it feel like it. That was quite a little drive there. Uh, I am really impressed with this car. <laughs> wow. And so that's the GT2 RS. This is the ultimate 911, the most insane 911 ever manufactured. And it's terrifying and thrilling at the exact same time. 
and now it's time to give it a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the GT2 RS looks cool, but far from beautiful. Porsche has taken the wings and the gouges and the angry add-ons too far, and this car no longer looks handsome or clean. However, it is still very aggressive, and that earns it a 7 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds, which is an easy 10 out of 10. Handling is incredibly tight, better than just about everything, and it gets a 10 out of 10. Fun factor is obvious, this car accelerates with the fastest, and turns with the sharpest, it's almost laughably fun to drive, and it gets a 10 out of 10. Cool factor is currently high. This is the sought-after Porsche model for sale right now, and it earns a 9 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 46 out of 50, which places it one better than the Huracan Performante, a big victory. Next up are the daily categories. Starting with features, the GT2 RS has a lot of tech, thanks to Porsche infotainment, but it's low on modern amenities like adaptive cruise control, not that anyone interested in this car will actually care, it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is rough, not intolerable, but not too far off, and it gets only a 3 out of 10. Quality is high, the interior is well made with nice materials, and Porsches are known for reliability, especially compared to Italian rivals, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Practicality is average for this segment with only two seats and a relatively small trunk, and it gets a 2 out of 10. Finally, value. This car will hold its value, but these days, basically any limited production exotic car will. For this one, though, it's a lot of money to spend on a 911. 300 grand can buy you a lot of cars that also don't have a $90,000 version. Still, it's a very special limited production car, and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 25 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 71 out of 100, which places it in some amazing company, just one behind the 918 Spider and ahead of the Huracan Performante. From a purely fun-to-drive performance perspective, this is probably second only to the new Ford GT for the most thrilling new car you can buy, and the GT costs twice as much. The GT2 RS is, pretty simply, amazing. Every other car would just say low, medium, high, or maybe soft, medium, and la, la.